tension force is another one. I'm not really going to define it. I'll just say it is transmitted through a rope or a cable or a string, etc. So let's think about the tension force by considering this situation. What if I had hanging from the ceiling a long cable? At the end of that cable was a bowling ball, a big mass like that. I actually happen to have that right here. So here is a cable all the way from the top of the amphitheater hanging down, bowling ball at the bottom, and it is free. It's not, it's not resting on the desk. It is uh, sitting here hanging just above the desk. So let's think, what's holding it up? Well, we got to do a free body diagram. Always do a free body diagram, right? So here's the bowling ball. Force of gravity, MG's pulling it down. And what's pulling it up, well, what's holding it up clearly is the cable. And the cable's doing it by applying a tension force. There is tension in the cable, and the sum of the tension and the weight in this case is zero. And that's why it's not moving in the y direction. So tension really is a property of a rope, cable, etc. Tension itself technically is not a force. It's actually a scalar property that is in Newtons. It doesn't really become a force until you attach the end of the cable to something. And then it applies a force. So it's a property of this thing that applies the tension force to the ends, to whatever is attached to the ends. If you say, what if nothing is attached to the end? Well, if nothing is attached to the end, there won't be any tension. Right? Two things have to kind of pull, or gravity, or some other force has to put this thing under tension. And then it's simply a way to transmit that force to another object. Um, let's look at some properties of tension. It's constant throughout the uh, cable. I'll just stick with cable. That's assuming nothing else is pulling on it on its sides. It's not going over a pulley and accelerating or anything. If it's just a cable with two objects on each end with forces, then it's constant. Um, it applies it to both ends. I already said that. And the tension, the tension force is along the string direction. Right? If tension is really just a property of the string, it doesn't really have a force. To get the force, you have to think about the direction of the string and the direction it's attached to something. So we can see that a little more clearly if we go to another example, and that is our old mass resting on a surface. Um, this so the surface is down here, and we have a big mass resting on it. And I happen to have something like that. Right here is my cinder block here, like that. Mass resting on a surface. Why is it not falling? It's not falling because uh, mg is pulling it down, right? but the normal force, whoops, equal and opposite, is pushing it up. Great. Now let's apply a tension force to it with this rope. All right, so the rope is attached. And if I pull up, I could potentially ultimately cancel, uh, or I could pull hard enough that I could lift it up in the air. And then instead of uh, uh, the normal force of the table uh, counteracting gravity, it would be my tension force counteracting gravity. And I don't want to do that, because I, you know, I mean, I could, but I don't want to. Um, but what I want to think about is, what if we do this? So here, I have a rope, and I have it under tension, and I'm pulling at an angle. So what forces are occurring? I'm applying a new force, and nothing is moving. Right, I'm applying a force, and nothing is moving. So let's draw the tension. Maybe you'd say, well, which way is tension applied? I don't know. So in this case, if the rope is at an angle, right, so here's the rope, and here's my hand pulling the rope, then the tension force, which I'll draw at the center, is also at that same angle. So the tension has a component up and a component this way. So I can draw the tension component horizontal and the tension component vertical. 
So the tension doesn't go normal to the surface, it goes along the direction of the rope or the cable. So what happens now, when I do this and it still doesn't move, you say, okay, the Y component of the tension must make up for some of the normal force. So the normal force must go down a little bit. And that kind of makes sense, I'm kind of lifting it. So the, the, the desk doesn't have to push up quite as hard. But I'm also pulling it, right? There's some horizontal tension component. So why isn't it moving in the horizontal direction? We look like we have unbalanced forces here. We don't though, because remember, there's good old static friction. Even though it's not moving, there's a friction force pulling back. And that friction force will adjust. If you pull this way, the friction force will pull that way. And it'll keep it from moving, just like the normal force kind of adjusts uh, to, to keep something from moving. If I pull hard enough at an angle, uh, enough to overcome the static friction, then we can make it move. See? And then it goes. So there, I pulled, notice I pulled at a lower angle to get more of my, core, my uh, um, component horizontal. Therefore, I overcame static friction and made, made the block move. So that's really it in a nutshell. In a problem, you'll often be given a cable and just being told it's under a certain tension. Apply that to whatever it's attached to. Or you'll be told it's hanging with a mass, and if that mass isn't moving, then you know that whatever the weight of that mass is, is the tension in the, in the spring or, or string or cable.